We began yesterday speaking about the concept of learning in a public forum, Torah. Um, even though this is a public forum, I'm not certain that this is the meaning, um, as we will see shortly. Um, although perhaps there is definitely some aspects, which I need to look more into, of uh, what it means gathering together and the divine presence of God that dwells, the Shekhinah that dwells within. That, <clears throat> that is the concept that we spoke about. Now, let's understand the distinction. What does it mean if one person is studying Torah or doing a mitzvah versus doing it in participation with a congregation, congregation 10 or more? And as we explained yesterday, that 10 being a quorum, a minyan, is a reflection of the entire whole, which is a very novel idea. Absolutely more people coming together, you know, the, the power is more than the sum total of the parts. That idea we know. In other words, if each per, two people come together and they each can lift 50 pounds, that's what they're capable of, right? 50 pounds each. But when they lift together, they can lift 120 pounds by way of, you know, of metaphor. Meaning the whole is greater than the sum parts. Um, but here is a novel idea that the Shechina, the divine presence of God, rests upon an indwelling of that Shechina, <coughs> which is transcendent um, of the human condition, dwells within. When we study in a, <coughs> in a group effort, uh, in a public gathering together, and... Um, as opposed to one individual. So the alternative explains. When one individual learns Torah, so there's an allotment of a reward, as the Mishnah says in Pirkei Avos. Even one who sits and learns. <clears throat> and what is that reward? Well, it means that the light of God's Torah be irradiates the soul of the individual. As God covers himself, garbs himself, as it were, with his Torah, right? That garb radiates, illuminates our soul. Now, before explaining that, I think we get that experience. We study Torah and we feel the light of God illuminates our soul. We get, you know, an excitement. We get um, feeling a divine connection. And that's absolutely something that happens, even if you're an individual, let alone in a group, that will also happen. But the group part we'll get back to in a moment. That this light that God garbs himself with as a garment irradiates our soul. What is that garment? Torah mitzvahs. That, now, what does that mean? Just like a garment, it's a metaphor, of course. A garment of light means it's a limited, just like, like this, you know, a garment has to fit the individual. So this is a light of God that is fitting, meaning limited. It can be integrated into our faculties. We can understand and feel and experience that light of God. Being as the soul is limited, and the faculties of our soul is also limited, therefore this light is a limited light that radiates, right? Who does it radiate? Those who really want, with their heart and soul, to seek out God, whether through prayer, whether through Torah study, and of course doing a mitzvah. That there's a pleasantness that the soul has of God, of his light that becomes revealed to us, again, as God, God garbs himself with the Torah. So this becomes then a light that irradiates our soul. This is the reward we're talking about. It's a limited one. 
right? You have to labor for it. You have to work for it. And you get befitting how much effort you put in. So, for example, we're studying right now and we get this reward now. You know, since it's... Uh, since I'm kind of teaching and you're listening, how focused are we? That will depend on how much our soul will be irradiated. How engaged are we with our minds, with our hearts? How much do we want to connect that God should irradiate our soul, should illuminate with his light our soul? As much as we want that, that's as much as we'll get, so to speak, right? Um, as much as we want that. We'll appreciate the sweetness of the Torah, the sweetness of God's light that our soul can, again, apprehend uh, because it becomes internalized, because it's a finite light. Now, that's the reward. Even one person learning Torah. Now, as our sages said, when 10 are coming together, a gathering of 10, the Shekhinah dwells. Actually, even when you're not studying, the Shekhinah dwells in a gathering of 10. That's a minion, that's a quorum. Now, what does it mean, the Shekhinah? The Shekhinah means the transcendence of God, not the limited light of God that we can have a pleasantness from. But this pleasantness is something that is beyond us. Because it, it's an infinite light of God. It's not a limited light. So therefore, it's not something that our that we grasp intellectually, we feel in our hearts that we can, we can have that, as we mentioned in the first part. That's a reward from studying, even if you're one person, of course, 10 also. But there's, again, a unique thing of a minion that is 10, as we mentioned, that's the perfect number, 10 faculties of God, 10 divine attributes of God, the, the sphere is, then that becomes an embodiment of entirety. In this instance, of the entirety of the Jewish people. So a minion reflects the entirety of the Jewish people and brings, hence, obviously, blessings and things to the entirety of the Jewish people, davening just the fact that you're there with the minion. What does it mean that it's infinite? What does it mean? My, my Torah mitzvahs, my Torah study and performance of mitzvahs being that it's done in a collective whole um, publicly and, you know, uh, in a public gathering? That doesn't achieve it? No. In other words, this is God's kindness. God bestows upon us something that is so great that we can't even experience it internally with our minds and hearts, it's that great. We will eventually, in times of Mashiach, but not now. But that doesn't mean we're not affected by it. Just because we don't experience something, just like the subconscious mind, or this mind metaphor. The subconscious mind has a greater effect upon us than our conscious mind. I, I, I recall once uh, reading something that what we consciously observe is seven parts versus what subconsciously we observe, not aware of though, is a million parts of the same incident, the same you know, scene or whatever it is. So the subconscious is much greater beyond our awareness that can serve as a metaphor. I'm just using that way of metaphor to appreciate what it means, the presence of something that is greater than us, um, but yet influences us without it being integrated within our minds and hearts. So this influence of this infinite light of God 
is absolutely happens when we have a minion and we pray with a minion. It happens when we have a collect a, a minion of people learning Torah together. Again, online is you're not in the same vicinity or in the same room, even though we're on the same channel over here. So there is something of it, but not completely. Uh, I need to investigate that a little more, which I will, but not right now. But the point is that what God does for our coming together as a collective whole, and just to bring out the idea how important community is and how difficult it is now, and why you might be observing in some places because of the pandemic, the challenges that there are in some communities, it, it, you know, not being able to come together for a minion. Um, now, our health is more important and we need to be careful with that. Uh, I, I'm not bringing out the issue over here and I don't want to discuss that issue of, uh, you know, um, we, we, you know, health, uh, you know, being careful of endangering a life is, is more important. So it's not the issue here that I want to bring out um, and discuss that. I just want to bring out how important the concept of community is, of community even when just 10 people come together, or 10 Jews come together, even not to study Torah or do a mitzvah. All the more so when they come together to study Torah to pray together, do a mitzvah together in a collective whole, that God's kindness, that he brings a light, an infinite light, not a finite one, that we can have some kind of experience, but an infinite light, which means it's something, what does it mean infinite? It means that my effort to bring this about is, is not, it's not really my effort that's creating this reality. I have to put in my effort. I have to be there in part of that collective whole, part of the minion. But God in his kindness imbues us with something far and above and beyond what, you know, our human reach could achieve. That's the point. It's of him, not of us. Now, therefore, the Alter Rebbe concludes, I, uh, uh, I'm not happy, he says, that I understand that when people do come together, they're not using it out in the appropriate way. Look how powerful this is, how meaningful this is. And it's not pleasant in my eyes that people should come to synagogue, pray, and then between Min Chemara, for example, not study. You should study. You should study, and he suggests between Min Chamar, you should study Ein Yaakov, which is the Agadata, the, the, the mystical dimension, the stories, not the Halacha, not the Jewish law, but the Agadata, study that between Min Um Great reward. And from the individual person that learns, of course, as we just explained, or earlier explained, and at the same time, the collective whole of everybody learning, how powerful that is. And if that's what the community of in the synagogue is doing, don't um, separate yourself from this. You shouldn't separate that which a community is engaged in. Very important concept that the elder brings. Further, he says you should also learn Jewish law from uh, Shochan Aruch, the code of Jewish law. And on Shabbos, you should learn uh, at the end of Shabbos, uh, laws about Shabbos, and so on and so forth. Um, one other point that uh, the Alter Rebbe makes is that this idea of what we are able to, um, to achieve in coming together in a, in, a, in, a, in a group, in a public gathering, a minion, is um, and the and the light of God that imbues us is much greater than what an angel could ever have bestowed upon them. Even though they have an awareness of God, but uh, this they don't have. So much so, the Alter Rebbe says that I heard from my teacher, Mizit Shemaget, uh, Reb Dov there, that when um, 
there's a group of, of Jews that gather together, a minion, and they're not even doing anything. And others are not even using the time in a, to study Torah and to, to pray, just the gathering itself. He says that an angel that comes over her head gets completely nullified, completely, so to speak, uh, aflamed, nullified out of being. That's how powerful it is, a gathering. Again, it's not because of our achievement. God says that this is, oh my gosh, a reflection of the entire Jewish people. And they're extremely powerful. That's why the al says, use out that power then to study Torah. Or, of course, pray in a minion. Uh, do a mitzvah collectively together. Because then you will bring an infinite light of God. Uh, this is the idea that it says that we don't get a reward in this world. Now, here the word reward, before we said you do get a reward, right? You get an experience, a limited one. But this is what it means. You don't get a reward in this world. In this world, you just, you know, study Torah, do the mitzvahs. What does it mean you don't get a reward? You don't get to experience that infinite light of God in this now. When will we? Times Mashiach. But now, we don't have the capacity for that experience. Times Mashiach, that infinite light that is imbued, imbues us, we will be able to have that experience. But for now, just do it, or just do it. What does just do it mean? Do the mitzvah. Study Torah. Together, but if you can't do it in, uh, collectively, individually. Collectively, like we're doing now. And of course, when we'll be able to, in some places maybe already, come to synagogue and learn in our Chabad house, Torah, or wherever your um, shul is and you study, or your teacher and you come in a, uh, in a group gathering to study, that is... A powerful thing that we need to bear in mind and and um, look forward to doing that but again I, I do want to say that there is something even we come like this together um, and study there is uh, some great um, some of these ideas definitely apply today Saishana Rabba the last day we call a, 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 a good kvittel that we should be written in and sealed because this is the final day of judgment. Tonight, Shemini Tzeres, followed by Simchas Torah, um, two day of holidays that the previous Rebbe said, it's 48 hours that what we achieved on Rosh Hashanah, the first days of the holidays of this month, what we achieved in the awe of God, now we achieve in the joy of celebrating, dancing, using your feet. Even if you can't dance, you know, you need to dance separate, <laughs> one from the other. Yet, we need to be able to celebrate this holiday in, as the previous Rebbe said, there's buckets of light of joy that we can take for the rest of the year. This is the holiday that we got to be so joyful. Probably need a little chaim or two or more to help us with that. But we need to celebrate and be um, full of, uh, of, of joy. If you're at home and you can't do Simchas Torah in your, in your shul, take a holy book, the Tanya, or a Chumash, five books of Moses, and dance with that, and do the Hakafas, circling around, whatever is necessary. We got to do it, because after all, for the Jewish people, this is a very unique holiday, a beautiful one. So we can accomplish much. Okay. 
when we speak about a minion, um, Linda and everybody, um, usually we speak about a minion for prayer purposes. Since a woman is not obliged to be limited to a time period um, uh, to do mitzvahs, so then, you know, the minion is not uh, something that a woman is obliged to be uh, a part of. And therefore, not just obliged, that she shouldn't be part of that. But here we're talking about not prayer minion. We're talking about gathering, public gathering. Public gathering, doing a mitzvah, studying Torah. That's the idea. So yes, there is that power of women gathering with women, right? And studying and doing some and doing mitzvahs that creates a, a great divine light as we've spoken. All right, folks, wishing everybody a wonderful Hoshana Rabbah, good kvittel, an amazing Shabbos and Yom Tov, an amazing Simchas Torah that we celebrate with such joy, such joy that we feel it in our feet. Have a wonderful day. Good Shabbos, good Shabbos.